Good morning, my creative friends. Sorry, I am running a little bit late this morning because I can't get my can't my uh, headphone to connect, and my tech advisor is still in bed this morning. So let me know if you can hear me. I've got some crazy hair going on this morning, um, but I wanted to talk about how I use old books this morning to create handmade journals and want to start painting a cover. We're going to have a pretty short show this morning because I have um, an appointment at 8 that I need to get a little less messy looking for. But I wanted to share a little bit about my love of using old books and talk about how do we get over the, the fear of kind of tearing up books. Good morning, Judy. Can you hear me all right this morning? So I'm having microphone issues. Couldn't get my, my headset to connect this morning. So I need to um, figure that out, but I didn't want to be later than I am. So this was a business book that was created. Great. Thank you. Glad you can hear me. You can probably hear my heater in the background too and see my crazy hair. Marion, I'm glad you're here and hope life is settling down. Thank you, Judy. So this is one that I've been working in over, actually the um, I worked in it for a year and then it kind of disappeared when I was moving and came backwards. And I haven't painted the cover and I keep looking at it every day thinking, you know what, I really want to get something on the cover and I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute. But this is a book where I literally cut the, the guts out of it and then created my own signatures and pages and sort of stick them all to stuck them all together. I also did this one. This one is an old children's school book. It was it's a really nice size and it is a book that would just get thrown away. As books become really obsolete, same with this one, good morning Kay, same with this one these books just get tossed into landfills. Libraries don't want them, used bookstores don't want them. Yes, business books are the great ones to tear up. I use the inside pages for collage material or palettes for cleaning off my brushes. These old children's books often have really wonderful illustrations for collage inside of them. And so this is one I use just creating manila folders and a variety of type of paper and it's a super simple process and this one has a little bit of a painty page in there from something as well one of the things that i discovered it's got a little envelope for tucking things one of the things i discovered is i like making really simple journals that are very usable and that I want to paint in. And sometimes when I use lots of beautiful painty papers, I actually find it harder to get started. I really love a good blank journal. And so for me, I learned that I don't want to put a lot of painty papers in them. I do want them to be blank. And I love painting on this manila folder material. It creates an interesting surface, but I also have some just nice mixed media paper in here. So cutting the guts out of a book and creating my own inside is one of the things that I love to do. And normally I paint the cover at the end. A lot of people paint the cover at the beginning. When I do that, I tend to get paint all over them and they get a little bit messy, right? You can see, you know, I've got this one, it's been dragged through the paint. So sometimes I will wait till the end. This one is almost full. Yeah, manila folders make great um, material for stitching signatures into. I used a manila folder to stitch all of my signatures into. And tomorrow, I'll walk through the whole process of how I create one of these journals. Um, but I wanted to talk about different kinds today and maybe get started painting one. I'm going to have a quick session today because I have, um, I'm recording an interview with someone at the top of the hour and I need to do something with my crazy hair and get out of my PJs for that. So there's this wonderful bookstore up in Estes Park, Colorado that's owned by the Friends of the Library and they have this room full of books that are, every book in the room is 25 cents. And I, this is where I think probably all of these 
different books came from or maybe from free giveaways. So I'm not spending a lot of money on these books, but I love using the, the covers, but this one was so interesting. So this is actually a magazine. So this is a little bit more of a storytelling session today. It has this um, ship engraved on the back, and this is from September of 1958. It even, look at this, it even still has an old subscription envelope in this one. So $18 for six issues and then they are offering gift subscriptions. So since the 50s, they've been using this same idea of paying for annual subscriptions, right? Like it's just fascinating. And how much fun would it be to make this envelope and have this envelope be in the journal? But this gorgeous magazine is full of, you really remember that? That is so cool. I had never heard of it before or seen it. And they had four or six of them in this room of this 25 cent book. So I bought all of them that they had and I've already used one. And so yes, I love this cover. So in this case, I would probably paint around this image, maybe tape some paper over and keep the image because I love the image, but paint over the rest of the cover. Although the cover is beautiful, I don't have to paint this one. But this one is full of beautiful, beautiful illustrations. And interestingly, it has a combination of newsprint type paper in it, as well as, look at those gorgeous elephants. And oh, look at that, the story of Genesis. So all these, so it has this nice glossy paper. This one has amazing images in it. I haven't looked through this one yet. The early balloons, so again, newsprint. So working in a book like this, this can easily become a visual journal all on its own. And to do that, what I would do would be to go through and tear out some of the pages, right? Some of the pages, so some that have these beautiful images that I'd want to use for collage. I might tear those out. But also, if I start adding a paint and collage to these pages, my book is going to get chunky and fat. So what I found when I painted the first one of these, and I can show that one tomorrow as well, I didn't grab that one, is that I actually ended up using my matte medium or a glue stick and gluing some of the pages together. So this glossy paper did not take wet media very well. Good morning, Diego. You want to come say good morning? Come on. Yes, good morning. So um, I ended up gluing pages together. So taking some pages out, gluing some pages together to create this you know, great surface. Look at that, so many fabulous images. So this one has so many cool images. I can tell you I'm gonna pull all these images out and save them for collage for other purposes. So again, there are so many ways that we can upcycle, recycle, and repurpose old books and not feel bad about it because I can tell you in the last you know 20 years so in 2012 we moved from Plano Texas to Santa Barbara California and I got rid of probably four bookshelves worth of books right old textbooks um, you know books in multiple languages from my graduate student studies and things that people had given us nobody wanted them right thrift stores didn't want them so we literally ended up having to throw some of them away and it was kind of heartbreaking. And so now I never feel bad about tearing up books for, for, for collage or painting in books because of this idea of it's a great way to not have all of this just go into our landfills or get burned, you know, whatever it is that people decide to do with them. And so I've been looking at this one a lot over the last few days, and it's something, one of my masks falling out there, and really feeling called to paint the cover of it. And what you'll notice is these covers are pretty slick, and so sometimes it takes a couple of a coats of gesso on there to really get them um, covered enough to be paint, painted over. So you could also collage over the top of these, which is kind of a fun idea. I'm having so much fun with this 
all this collage fodder I created for my found objects course, which I just realized all the videos have some kind of glitch in them and I'm gonna have to re-record the course, but at least it was a super fun, super fast course. So I'm thinking, what if I covered this with paper, which is kind of fun because that's like, remember when we were kids in school and we used to have to cover all of our books? So I'm loving using these collage papers and I'm wondering what can I do with these to create something really fun and original. And what's interesting about this, if I do it this way, then I can probably paint the pages even before I attach it to the book, which feels kind of like a fun idea this morning. So you can see me, I'm thinking on the fly. But the thoughts that have been on my mind, my, my stepdad shared this wonderful article with me. So I'm gonna paint this page and just see what happens and show you how I might start, just like I did yesterday with this whole page of collage. And it's got a piece of paper stuck to it. This whole page of collage and create something that I really love. But he sent this article it was a little short article from the, the New York Times, and I love my stepdad. He's always clipping articles and comic strips and all kinds of things from magazines and newspapers and, and sends them in the, in the mail, in the snail mail. And it's got a piece of something stuck in there. So I'm going to get a nice coat of matte medium on this to kind of seal that surface, give a little more integrity to this page as I start to add paint. And I'm loving this whole page full of circles. I could even use the page as it is, but I'm feeling like I wanna bring some color back. The last, last two days were sort of moody pieces that were very much black, white, and one color, if you watch the videos from the last couple of days. All right, so I got a nice coat of matte medium on there. But in the article, this guy is talking about how easy it is to get wrapped up in what's happening in the world, to you know get caught up in the, the drama and the politics. I don't watch the news very often because it doesn't um, lift my spirits. It usually has the opposite impact. I pay attention to what's going on, but I try hard not to get pulled into it. But he was talking about how you know we can get pulled into things and we can lose sight of beauty in the world. And so he shared about how he goes to museums or he looks at art and he said, talked about going to see an Edward Hopper exhibit in New York and how beautiful the exhibit was. And, and Edward Hopper was a master of light. I absolutely love Edward Hopper's paintings. And so I can imagine getting to see something like that, that I would have gone a couple of different times as well. But he talked about just the importance of seeking beauty to combat some of the despair that we may be feeling. And it's the same way I feel about inspiration, seeking inspiration, being out in nature. And making sure that we're making time, right? Making time to seek inspiration, making time to seek inspiration. So I'm gonna get this dry for a second. So let me mute myself. All right, and what I'm noticing is that it's a little floppier than I want, so I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this to the cover of my journal and then paint on my journal that way. I'm sort of looking at what piece of this do I want on here, and I'm gonna use my matte medium to get that down on the cover. And you notice I'm using a fair amount of matte medium because I really want these things to 
have a nice even coat because it helps with wrinkles and air bubbles and really getting that laid down on the page. But I would encourage you to think about when was the last time you went to a museum or you even just went for a walk someplace different, right? Like Brad last weekend's like, I need to get out in nature. And I mean, we live surrounded by nature, but still when we walk out our front door, you know, we're walking through a neighborhood for a while before we get to a path. Getting that really flat on there. And so making an effort to go look at other people's art. We have a beautiful, amazing sculpture garden here. And every couple of months, I love to go walk through the sculpture garden, like hundreds and hundreds of pieces of sculpture. And it's so inspiring to just see what other people have created. And we can get very stuck in our ruts, right? Very stuck in our ruts. And it's important to find fresh fodder for our eyes, for our hearts, and for our souls. We can learn so much from other artists. All right, so I'm gonna let that flap just flow to the inside, which will be super fun. And I will eventually probably trim that top edge up might tape it down we'll see what happens but for right now I'm going to fold those over so I can see what it is that I'm painting on and I'm loving the shapes of these bubbles and I think that I'm going to like basically use this like a coloring page right and just um, paint some bubbles on there good morning Yvonne welcome welcome great to see you so I am covering my journal that I've been painting in because I realized I was tired of looking at this cover and really wanting to have some more color and decoration on the journal and make the outside of the journal as beautiful and full of life and color as the inside of the journal. And we have talked about repurposing old books and why it's such a great idea to recycle and upcycle old books and keep them out of the landfills. Because nobody wants old books anymore. They tend to get, oops, knocking over everything this morning. And I'm thinking I'm gonna come in to start with just some Posca markers and have some fun putting some color on the page. Um, and I am literally knocking over everything on my desk this morning. So I have a huge box of Posca markers, some new, some old. And I just grabbed the very first one. So again, just sort of working intuitively. You guys know I love circles. Mandalas, sacred circle designs. And so this piece of paper is one that I created for my found objects class, which is now open for registration over on Teachable. It's a funky color. It's like, I thought it was gonna be a nice dark burgundy, but it's kind of a cranberry color. And this is a fun, easy way to create a cover for a book. So I'm using just a piece of paper, that collage paper that I created. But you could just as easily do this with a piece of scrapbook paper or even just blank mixed media paper. And I love it kind of neatens up the cover. And sometimes it's tricky painting on the surface of old books if they're sort of glossy. So this one was super, super glossy. A couple of the others I have have actually really nice texture to them or have a matte finish. And so if they have a glossy texture, you can do a couple of things. You can sand it with a piece of sandpaper a little bit first. And just by doing that, you can just give enough tooth to it that the gesso will adhere a little bit better sometimes just simply adding a couple of coats of gesso to prime it just like you would a canvas can also 
help that cover, but I noticed on the, the glossy ones, sometimes even the gesso just kind of scrapes away quite a bit. And I can see this being a fun one to color and then come back and add some Zen Tingle patterns to. But I'm curious, those of you that are joining me live or watching the replay, when was the last time you visited an art museum and got inspired by seeing other people's art? Brad and I are still talking about the Picasso print show that we saw in Fort Collins earlier this year. I'm a huge fan of Picasso's art and the story that it tells. And in fact, that article from the New York Times talked about his famous piece, Guernica, which is a giant mural-sized painting that he created um, in response to the Spanish Civil War and really shows the real raw part of that. Working on your sketchbook for the upcoming sketchbook revival, awesome. Yeah, I saw that um, Ali Manning uh, created a, a video for that, which is another example of how to create an upcycled book. I love, love, love Ali's work. And she creates really beautiful, fancy books. My books tend to be very, very utilitarian and very simple. I want the book to come together fast because I'm more interested in having a book to work inside of than I am in creating a beautiful book. So I love and admire people that create these like stunningly beautiful handmade books where the book is the art. But for me, I'm looking for that next journal that I can work inside of. And I have decided I love creating my own and getting to put the papers that I want inside of them. And so Yvonne, it's been years since you visited a museum. So it's maybe a great time to go on an artist date with yourself. Local galleries are great, awesome. Um, a small quilt show, uh, quilt shows are amazing. I'm going to be in Asheville in April, and last time I was there, I went to a beautiful quilt show at a little museum right at the t top of the Blue Ridge Parkway that was just exquisite, and I'm excited about being in Asheville because it is a city of art and galleries. Okay, so these are really funky colors together, but again, I'm just sort of having fun in that childlike way of picking colors, putting them on the page, getting something onto the, the surface here to make this journal even more my own instead of, you know, just this blank com company book. I think it was a company report that was created. And I love showing ways that we can always make things even more our own. So the last couple of days we talked about using magazine images to create stencils and masks. We talked about creating our own collage materials. I go frequently to good art museums seven miles from me, but many great small museums in Connecticut. Awesome, love it. We haven't been to our little local museum yet in Loveland, but we need to do that. They've had some, some interesting shows and I always just sort of watch. And I've been also watching, we're about an hour away from downtown Denver and Denver has fabulous art museums. So that's definitely on my list as well. And there's something so soothing about just coloring in circles. And so to create this page, I literally used bottle caps. So, um, so this, I think it was something maybe smaller than this, but I used like the, the top of a jar and the top of a Coca-Cola 
bottle, a screw top, and that and black paint on a piece of white paper, and that was how I created the background pattern. So it made a really fun page of circles. that now I can come in and add patterns and designs to. Maybe I'll start just adding some patterns in here. Maybe some shapes in here. And again, I think it's time that we got over our reluctance to tear up books. Of course, I have, you know, shelves and shelves of books. You can see a couple of them, three of them in, over there in the corner behind me that I would never tear up. We have some beautiful historic books that... Uh, are worthy of keeping but you know there's so many things that we buy and read or that we've been carrying around for decades maybe not knowing what to do with them and I want to encourage you to give yourself permission to start using them and I think uh, as I get older I want to travel lighter I don't want to have like as much stuff lingering around I certainly don't want to leave my kids someday not that that'll be anytime soon but you know burdened with stuff that they don't want like my every time we see my mother-in-law she's like what do you want what can i put your name on can you go through this stuff and and we're like mm, no like there's nothing right there's nothing um my daughter's much more sentimental than i am i think she wishes i would hold on to more stuff and I'm like yeah it's just not my thing so think about what do you have around you that's no longer serving you I'm not a fan of Marie Kondo and the you know being that aggressive the magic art of tidying up you know being that aggressive with stuff but I'm pretty aggressive with letting go of things every time we move and the more often we move which is about every decade Right, the more willing I am to let go of things. All right. I'm going to have to pop off here pretty quick this morning and go get ready for an appointment at the top of the hour. So I might be finishing this one up tomorrow. It's definitely needing a lot more color. These colors still are kind of a little bit muted, but it's creating a really fun cover. It came together really fast and simply. But tomorrow I want to take that Horizons journal that I showed you and show what I would do to the inside to use it as it is. So sometimes like this book, you know, I cut the guts out and um, then rebuilt the entire inside of the book. It had some cool charts and graphs and stuff in it that got used for collage fodder. But I uh, also have learned to love just using the paper that's in the book and experimenting with what it will do. So tomorrow I'll show you how I would use a book without taking out the guts, which is another way of recycling, repurpose, and upcycling a book, is to use what is there. Let's see, I love this giant chunky super fat pink Posca. A friend of mine sent me a bunch of Poscas in some different sizes and shapes that I had not played with before and I really had fun with some of the 
different nib sizes. So when you find a tool like this that you really love, it's really important to try different versions of it, right? Because they all do different things. And oh, this is a fun page. So this is like making my inner child really happy. It's just sort of silly and bright. There's no meaning or purpose to this. So often I'm creating art that, you know, is rich and dense with meaning and purpose. And then sometimes I just need to play. Sometimes I just need to play. My head is very full this morning. Before class, I was prepping my lesson plans for my visual journaling club today and thinking about where to go. We're reading the myth of Artemis and Apollo, which is really fascinating. Papa Green was what it needed. I also started a new big sacred circle painting for one of my son Connor's designs this week. So it feels like I have a lot of creative ideas pouring out of me. My head has been feeling pretty full. So sometimes just a simple, playful page like this is what I need to just rest on the page, to relax on the page, to just let go and play and experiment. And here's the thing, at the end, if I didn't like it, I could just gesso over it and start again, but I'm actually really loving it. It makes for a really fun, simple, effective journal cover. Is that from the goddesses and every woman, Marion, learning that you're an Artemis type? But yes, I agree. I definitely identify with the, the goddess Artemis. And the, the version of the story that we're reading is really about Artemis and Apollo and the twin flames and looking at both the, the divine masculine and the divine feminine, the energy of the sun and the moon. All right, so I am gonna pause here for today. So this was just sort of an introductory conversation. Oh, nice, I've never taken um, a course with her, but I have read a, a number of her books. I really love The Goddesses and Older Women as well. But so this is one way I might create a cover from an old book, right? So I'll probably do the, the same on the back. Tomorrow I want to look at that Horizons journal and see where would I go with that and maybe I'll work in that for a little while on here. So just a fun informational session, a good start on a cover and I am off to tame my hair and get out of my PJs and get ready for an interview. And just a quick reminder to please like this video so we can encourage other people to come along and watch as well. Have an amazing rest of your day and I will be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Mountain Time with a little more luxury of time to play in the new um, journal that I want to create, right? In the new journal that I want to create. So thank you all for being here live. Thank you for watching the replay. And I appreciate all of you. This is Dr. Minette Riordan. This is Painting in Your PJs with Crazy Hair. Have a great day. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.